Is it necessary for us human beings to have a representative? Or is self-representation enough through personal achievements? Can any ordinary person become a representative of mankind? Is this position granted by a higher authority on earth? Or is it a divine position given by God for the reformation of the corrupted societies? Who are the indefinite representatives over mankind? When the Almighty God proposes the necessity of having a leader who will guide his followers to perfection, is it safe to consider the current rulers and kings as leaders? Or is there a different type of leadership intended? If so, where is this leader? And what are the reasons behind the long absence? Is it possible to follow someone who we never seen or heard from? Who is intended by the famous narration of the greatest messenger, which states, whoever departs from this world not acknowledging the imam or the leader of the time will die the death of the ignorance. Such questions have been asked on a daily basis and the answers have become repetitive when it comes to the existence of such an important character. Respected viewers, brothers and sisters in Islam, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to the third episode of The Awaited Apostle. Respected viewers, welcome back once again. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to the third episode of The Awaited Apostle with me, your host Ahmad Ali. In the previous episode, we talked about and examined the life of various individuals in history, prophets and messengers who lived a very long time and went into occultation and compared it with the life of Imam al-Mahdi, may Allah hasten his reappearance. But for the sake of tonight's episode, uh, I am honored to host this episode once again with my dear guest, Sayyid Mudaffar Al Qazwini. Assalamu alaikum, Sayyidna. Wa alaikum assalam. How are you? Allah. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Uh, yesterday's talk was uh, very interesting. Uh, Alhamdulillah. We had uh, various evidences uh, regarding uh, the long life that Imam al Mahdi, uh, may Allah hasten his reappearance, uh, up until now, 1200 years. Uh, but, Sayyidna, we want to move on to a different topic today, inshaAllah. Uh, which is the importance and the significance of representation. Mm. Uh, we do find that uh, a lot of people lack, and when you ask them who represents you, they go into silence. They don't know what the actual, uh, what to answer with. Uh, so Sayyidina, what is the significance of representation? Well, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Uh, after starting with the name of Allah, representation in the life of uh, the ordinary man is uh, something very significant. Mm -hmm. Who or what represents us or to whom or what we represent. Mm -hmm. uh, in any field in life, representation could uh, you know, either make an individual or a person, uh, you know, cannot reach his goals and destinations without the right representation. For example, you know, if you're uh, going for a job interview, mm -hmm. basically what represents you is your CV. Yes. And, you know, uh, prior uh, employers, contacts whom you, uh, you know. If uh, you've been employed in America or any anywhere in the West, usually they ask you on uh, uh, to write three different contacts in your resume where you know the new employer could call and inquire about you. Mm -hmm. uh, even if it's a scholarship or a degree, at the end of the day, this is what represents you. It's mm -hmm. another form of contact. You have a you know scholarship from this university, basically you're referring, you're being referred back to this university or yes. college. So it's also another form of representation. When you go ask some, uh, you know, for, for, uh, for s s someone's hand for marriage, you know, they'll usually ask you, you know, who do you know, uh, who sent you, you know, who, who could represent you, yes. who could represent your family, we don't know much about you. We need to ask uh, about you and so on and so forth. Yeah. So, you know, a person by himself, 
It kind of, you know, uh, in society does not uh, stand too valuable. You have to be represented by someone or something. It's an important aspect of It's life. an important aspect of life. This is how uh, the nature of every single human being is, you know. Yeah. It doesn't matter whether what your religion is or what whether your ethnicity or, or, or not. No, this is how we're created. This is how, what our innate is and our nature is. When our created created us, by nature, our nature is, you know, uh, we uh, give representation, uh, representatives, you know, and we acquire representatives. So, you know, uh, it's much more clear when you're living your uh, everyday life. Yes. Uh, but what people do not understand is, is you know, when it comes to religion and belief, mm -hmm. as you know, uh, if you see yourself as a believer, whether you're a Muslim, a Jew, Christian, a Hindu, a Buddhist, you know, any religion that it could be, who represents you? Based on your religion and faith, who represents you today? It's not who represented you, you know, uh, 1400 years ago or 2000 years ago, 3000 years ago. Who your prophet uh, is or who the messenger was that came with your religion. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, who is your representative today? Who uh, represents you Who's your representative to your Lord and uh, who's your Lord's representative today? Uh, this is something that's very important for, uh, for Muslims, especially Shia Muslims. Muslims all agree that uh, there has to be a representative, a divine representative of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at all times. Now, uh, what uh, the difference is, is uh, you know, what we will mention, uh, inshallah, in upcoming episodes, the difference between Shia and Sunni uh, uh, understanding is whether he's born or not born and so on and yes. so forth. But we got into that in the first episode yes, we and did. we will keep clarifying inshallah. in the episodes to come. But for example, the hadith, uh, by the Prophet says, "Man mata walam yarif imam zamanihi mata mita tujahiliya," and this hadith is given to us in the book Tabaqatul Hanafiya, page four fifty-seven. He who dies and does not know the imam, the representative of his time, he will die the the death of a pagan. A, the death of a person who did not believe uh, in God or any of his religions. You know, uh, there is no difference between him and an idol worshiper. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, those who claim to be, uh, you know, monotheistic and believe in one God and so on and so forth, that uh, you need to have someone represent you all the time. Definitely. Uh, why is this important? Now, uh, to clarify this issue, is you know some 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 would say that there is no problem. As for our uh, uh, you know Sunni brothers and sisters, they'll say from the time of uh, the Prophet and then uh, till the Messiah. Mm -hmm. uh, so during this time. Who is your representative? You know, we mentioned in the first episode that there cannot be a time in which there is no Khalifa, there is no representative and vicegerent on earth representing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yes. So re according to this hadith, if you don't have someone to represent you, then what is the outcome? Mm -hmm. I mean, just to add upon your point, uh, what also falls under that category is uh, the infallibility, uh, leadership, and role model. And a prime example of that, if we want to take it into consideration, uh, if a person wants to you know, have a surgery, when he goes to uh, a hospital or a clinic to get that surgery done, and there's 50 doctors in that same field, he's going to look for the best fit doctor that can 
you know, do the surgery perfectly. He goes to the first doctor and sees that he's not, you know, he doesn't have experience. So he goes to the second one who has a lot of experience and had made no mistakes. And he goes to the third one, he says, you're the one I'm looking for. Goes to the third one and sees that he's also perfect, but only had one mistake. So at the end, he's going to find and he's going to choose the one that's most fit to do the surgery because he wants to ensure his health. The same way this example is illustrated when we want to choose our leaders, our role models, our representatives, the same way. And this is why when you want to choose who represents you, it's important to look at their life and to look at who they actually are. When we, for example, if we want to look at uh, the representative of our time, inshallah, uh, we'll get into that more. We have to find, are they perfectly fit to be the leader, to be the representative uh, of us? And hence, we have to make the right choice to ensure that those representatives are the actual role models that bring us closer to the Almighty God. Ahsan, ahsan. Uh, another hadith with similar uh, meaning from the book of Musnad Ahmed, mm -hmm. Uh, volume 4, page 96. Man mata bighayra imam, mata mitata jahiliya. Mm -hmm. Which uh, also refers to the same meaning. The person who dies in this life and he does not have an imam representing him. Mm -hmm. He does not have a, a vicegerent, you know, uh, in his life which he believes that he is the representative of Allah during his lifetime dies the death of a pagan mm -hmm. and as the Quran says in uh, Surah Al-Asra mm -hmm. ayah verse 71 mm -hmm. kulla that on the day of judgment we will summon every uh, you know group of people nations after nations uh, by their imams, by yeah, who they took as leaders and who was their leader at the time. So, uh, you know, uh, first it's very important to have a leader uh, and a representative in this life because the one who represents you in this life will represent you on the day of judgment. Mm -hmm. Now this relationship, this relationship between uh, you know, us normal individuals and this Messiah. The Messiah uh, that will come to bring peace and justice to this world. Mm -hmm. Is it based on, uh, you know, relativity that he's my relative? Yes, a lot of people have You know, people, a lot, a lot of people have this misconception yeah. that just because if I'm related through the scriptures that, you know, maybe he's a from the lineage of David or from he's from the lineage of Muhammad yeah. peace be upon him or he's from the lineage of Ismail you know that this is enough is it being related to that person meaning uh, that because you're related to this Messiah that he's your Messiah and he's your representative or is uh, are there more values behind in what a person should carry and have to, to be represented by someone yes. and have them to be their representative in this life and in the hereafter. Mm -hmm. So uh, just like I mentioned, like people who think they are Sadat, Sayyids, because they're related to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, then uh, their Messiah should be the Mahdi. Mm -hmm. uh, is this correct or is this not correct? You know, people who are, you know, following the Ismaili school of thought and you know have uh, basically narrowed down the, the, the capability of, of the Messiah being from the sons of Ismail only and their Imams being from the sons of Ismail only is it just based on lineage or what is it based on mm -hmm. you know as if a person w wants to represent you or have uh, this representation uh, or is it based on the value, uh, the message that this uh, Messiah brings? That this uh, 
uh, vicegerent of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and God brings? Mm -hmm. Do we follow him and ha place him as a representative because we are related to him or because of his message, because of his values, because of, of his teachings, because of who he represents? Mm -hmm. Thus the Quran says, مَا كَانَ مُحَمَّدٌ أَبَا أَحَدٍ مِّنْ رَجَالِكُمْ yes. لَكِنْ رَسُولُ اللَّهُ وَخَاتَمُ النَّبِيِينَ That don't think that just you being related to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi has any value when you don't follow uh, his uh, ethical values, his mm -hmm. Islamic values. Yes what he's preaching and what he's teaching, mm -hmm. you know, what he has brought from his Lord. If you're not following the commandments of his Lord and the teachings of his Lord, then, uh, you know, you being related to Prophet Muhammad or to, you know, Prophet Dawood or Ismail and so on and so forth has Nothing no value. Mm -hmm. And uh, another beautiful hadith by Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi afdala salati wa salam says, إِنَّ وَلِيُّ مُحَمَّدْ مَنْ أَطَاعَ اللَّهِ وَإِنْ بَعُدَتْ لَحْمَتُهُ The one who uh, takes Muhammad as a representative or Muhammad represents him and he's his wali, his, re his representative uh, is is the one who was obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala even though their flesh is far away, you know, they're not related by blood and flesh. And the enemy of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa ali is 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 his enemy even if their flesh was, you know, if they were blood related or not. Mm -hmm. You know, if they were blood related, but he was like Abu Lahab, who, you yeah, know, so who, who, was, who, was, who was, was the enemy of the Prophet and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then this does not mean anything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, just to add a point, that point is that it's, it's uh, funny to see that because even when Sadiq alayhi uh, salam, when, when they were asked who is more related to the Prophet, and he says, blood related relation had nothing to do with it it's the same way you said it the closer you are to Allah the closer you are to the Prophet tabbat yada ida Abi Lahab and yet you know perish the hands of Abu Lahab yet he is the uncle of the Prophet was Salman minna Ahlul Bayt Salman is from us Ahlul Bayt and how far is Salman from Prophet Muhammad because of yet, the message because, because of, of the, the message because that uh, Salman Farsi took in and never refuted so you know having a representative is very important you mm -hmm. know just like you need a representative in a, in your everyday life yes you know you want to go buy, buy buy a house you need a bank to represent you yes you know you you want to uh, uh, buy uh, uh, things that are very expensive you need a company to represent you and this is just how life works it is yes so why we as human beings don't think about this issue that who represents us to our Lord mm -hmm. and who is our Lord's representative to us. Right now, uh, the year 2016, who represents mankind to their Lord? Mm -hmm. You know, and, and who's the representative of, of, of our Creator today, 2016? Who's the representative? that all these uh, sons of Adam will say, this is the person that represents us. Mm -hmm. And if, if you have no clue, this is a, a, a big problem. It is. And one of the misconceptions that is raised uh, is that the narration you brought, man mata wa lam whoever uh, departs or dies and does not know the imam, the leader, the representative of his time, he will die the death of, of pagans, of the people prior to Islam, the ignorant people. Some people say when you ask them, who is the Imam of your time? They say, well, the king of this country or the ruler, he's my leader. I mean, how can we you know, dissect this and, and refute it? Uh, the difference, uh, uh, you know, what we need to clarify about this issue that it cannot be any regular man, you know. Definitely. This position 
of representation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The person who represents Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has to be worthy of representing Definitely. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, I keep uh, going over this, that if, you, if, 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 if a prophet or a messenger, uh, a representative of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if he makes one simple sin, then, uh, you know, just the goals behind what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created everything uh, perishes and vanishes. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, God, speaking about God, God would not create heaven and hell and send you a representative that is not infallible, a representative that makes mistakes and then hold you and I accountable of the same things that the representative did in his life. Mm -hmm. It does not make sense. It doesn't. You know, so if we find it in some books, it's uh, the reason is, is because even the people of these books agree that their books were tampered with by kings, by priests, by rabbis, and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. They know there is something wrong with the books. Mm -hmm. And logically, if you use yes. your logic, and if you're a firm believer of a God who is merciful, who is, uh, you know, uh, uh, pleasant, who is merciful, he would never punish those who he created for, you know, giving them the wrong representative, Definitely. representation. He tells you not to drink, not to fornicate, but the representative that he has said is doing X, Y, and Z, mm -hmm. and you know, and so on and so forth. And that's an important issue. So this is why, not, well, you know, it, 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 it cannot, cannot happen. A king today, can you give me one king that is clean, you know, yeah. and, 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 and honorable? The kings we speak about today are bombing, you know, uh, poor and innocent people in Yemen yeah. for no reason. You know, they're waging wars, Even they're waging Iraq. battles in Iraq, whether, you know, whether it's a queen, whether it's a king, you know, they all uh, have, a hand. have a hand in mischief and destruction in this world. Definitely. But inshallah, we'll continue this discussion uh, after the short break, if you will, Sayyidina. Uh, respected viewers, uh, right now, uh, the discussion is very interesting uh, regarding who actually represents us. But inshallah, we'll continue this discussion after the break. So stay tuned. <laughs> وذكرياتي وكل شعوري يا الحبك نجاتي في مماتي وفي نشوري اهدي لك حياتي وذكرياتي وكل شعوري يا الحبك نجاتي في مماتي وفي نشوري ما ادريش اقول يا سبط الرسول ما ادريش اقول يا سبط الرسول حيرت العقول يا بدر السنين جمال شع هلال على البرية بدرك بيت لالا بضي جلالا محلا ضي شعبان بجمال شع هلال على البرية بدرك بيت لالا بضي جلالا محلا ضي يا معنى الخلود يا سر الوجود يا معنى الخلود يا سر الوجود قدم لك عهود صوت العاشقين صوت العاشقين
حبك يا حبيبي سر غيب ونور عسنا لجروحي طبيبي يا مجيب كل ملمة حبك يا حبيبي سر غيب ونور عسنا لجروحي طبيبي يا مجيب كل ملمة تحضر بالمعاد يا حسن العباد تحضر بالمعاد يا حسن العباد يا درب الرشاد يهدي العالمين أفرحنا بروحنا Respected viewers, welcome back. Hope you inshallah enjoyed that short report. Uh, but before we went into break, we discussed the importance and the significance of representation. So let's continue the discussion with my dear guest, Sayyid Mudaffar. Assalamu alaikum, Sayyidina. Welcome back. Allah alaikum. Sayyidina, before the break, we talked about the importance of representation. Uh, but unfortunately, right now, there's a misconception uh, within the youth, also elders. Uh, it's safe to say in the West, uh, they lack uh, the ability of, you know, representing who represents them. That may sound confusing uh, because, you know, some people have tattoos on their bodies of Mam Ali or, or whatever they are. Uh, they have bill, uh, billboards hung up, pictures uh, on their cars, whatever they have, that they try to show who represents them. But is this what Islam intends when they say that there's an imam, there's a leader, there's a representative that should represent them? Is this a sort of representation? No, this is, you know, shallow, very shallow. If, mm -hmm. if, if a person believes that a picture or a tattoo or, you know, a car emblem mm -hmm. is representing, uh, you know, their... Uh, Messiah or representing their, you know, uh, whom they believe is the representative of God. Mm -hmm. It has to have much more value into it, you know. Yes. Basically, you're living your life as, uh, you know, uh, a non-Muslim. No different than any average American or average Canadian, average uh, British, or, you know, average uh, Aussie, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, just having a tattoo that says, La Fata Illa Ali, and the sword of the Faqar. The sword of the Faqar, which we find on most of our youth today, mm -hmm. boys and girls, you know, uh, on their Twitter or uh, Instagram accounts, you see them without hijab, not living uh, an Islamic life, but mm -hmm. you'll see that, uh, you know, they've, they've written, live like uh, Ali, die like Hussein, and wow. no, it's, it's, it's not these uh, small things that are repre uh, repre will represent you, or, you know, uh, and they're not the connection that you need with, the, with your Messiah. Mm -hmm. So... This is something that, you know, our dear brothers and sisters need to realize is that this is not enough. This is not what Islam wants. Islam has, uh, you know, certain values that a person must carry. Definitely. And inshallah, we'll get into this in uh, uh, our later episodes of what kind of characteristics, what kind of values and merits should a person carry uh, uh, to, to, to show that he represents the Imam of his time and uh, who represents him. Mm -hmm. So that is also important and it's good that we uh, cleared up that misconception. Uh, but there's also a misconception, another misconception, which is related to all the religions uh, revealed today. Uh, every religion has its own Messiah. We know that. But some, even, you know, Sunnis, they claim that how can a prophet pray behind a non-prophet, which is an imam? I would like to mention this narration by Jabir ibn Abdullah al-Ansari, the great companion of Prophet Muhammad, who lived up 
up until Imam Baqir which is a very long period of time, he says, a group of people of my ummah, this is Prophet Muhammad saying, a group of people of my, um, my ummah will fight for the truth until near the day of judgment, when Jesus, the son of Mary, will descend, and the leader of them will ask, the leader of them being Imam al-Mahdi, may Allah his reappearance, will ask him to lead the prayer. But Jesus declines and refuses, saying, no, verily among you Allah has made leaders for others and he has bestowed his bounty upon them so through this we find that no not every individual religion or not every individual uh, human on this planet has his own messiah they all come under the banner of one messiah which is the Mahdi how can you comment on that uh if we get into this topic through different religions and faiths, you'll see that, yes, they all do believe in a Savior. Mm -hmm. They all do believe in a Messiah. But, uh, you know, the translation of the word or the understanding of this phenomena differentiates sometimes very similar. You yes. know, the, the, the core of the subject is mm -hmm. very similar. What, uh, you know this person will bring is very similar but uh, there are simple aspects that you know are different than other religions mm -hmm. as for Judaism as for Judaism the difference between Judaism and Christianity Judaism also does not believe that the Messiah is a God or uh, you know part God uh, like Christianity mm -hmm. uh, so they believe the Messiah will be a great as a, uh, I'll read you a verse from Jeremiah mm -hmm. uh, 23 5 the Messiah will be a great politician leader descended from King David so this is part of the you know Jewish belief that he will be a great politician and a leader and a descendant of King David Nabiullah Dawood Prophet David uh, now you know uh, does it have to do anything with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does it have to do anything uh, you know as a divine representation mm -hmm. this is you know uh, not mentioned as if you could see now, he will be a great political leader. Mm -hmm. You know, so uh, any person they feel like is as a great political re leader might you know fit the category. And another uh, verse in Jeremiah mm -hmm. uh, thirty-three fifteen, he will be a charismatic leader, inspiring others to follow his example. He will be a great military leader who wins, who win battles for Israel. He will be a great judge who makes righteous decisions. So these are, you know, the criterias of, of what they believe uh, what, uh, will be in, in their Messiah. He, mm -hmm. he will be a charismatic leader. He will inspire others. He will uh, be a great military leader, and he has to win battles for Israel. So, uh, uh, is it for God? Is it for mankind? No. They specify uh, and make it specific that he has to win battles for Israel. Mm -hmm. uh, he's a great judge who makes righteous decisions. Mm -hmm. uh, so. If you could see, there is, you know, similar, uh, similar aspects of, uh, you know, that people will be inspired by him. You know, all uh, religions will accept this. Uh, he will, uh, you know, make righteous decisions. Uh, he will be a great judge. You know, you have to be a great judge mm -hmm. to, you know, uh, r remove injustice. And, and, and tyranny. If, you, if you're not a great judge and you're not a fair judge, then uh, it does uh, not make sense for you to be in the position to represent God. Mm -hmm. So the difference between Muslims and, 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 and Jews when it comes to the uh, 
uh, aspect of Messiah is his lineage. They believe he's from David. We believe he's from Muhammad, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Uh, and again, they believe that uh, they don't know when he was born or when he will be born. Mm -hmm. So the same, uh, you know, question falls upon them that since uh, uh, Musa and uh, uh, since the last prophet that uh, our Jewish brothers and sisters had till today who was the representative of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon man the connection between this earth and the heavens between man and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mm -hmm. but just to add upon your point uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala states in the Holy Quran in chapter 21 verse 105 Surah Al-Anbiya uh, the chapter of Prophets uh, he says وَلَقَدْ كَتَبْنَا فِي الزَّبُورِ مِنْ بَعْدِ الذِّكْرِ أَنَّ الْأَرْضَ يَرِثُهَا أَبَادِيَ الصَّالِحُونَ And we wrote in Psalms, Zabur, Psalms, after the, after the reminder that surely my righteous servants will inherit the earth. So we do find that Psalms is also mentioned in Christianity that the righteous servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will inherit the earth and remove all the impurity and uh, and justice from it. So they go hand in hand uh, with, with all religions. Yes. So they all intertwine with each other. Yes. And when it comes to, to the point where, uh, you know, not knowing whether he's born, where he will be born, uh, maybe later to come and mm -hmm. so on and so forth, we see the similarity uh, with Sunnis, where, you know, they also mainly don't believe that he was born yes and he will be born uh, you know at the end of time and mm -hmm. so on and so forth mm -hmm. but uh, difference is with Shia Muslims we believe that uh, humans sons of Adam need a divine proof uh, and a vicegerent and a representative of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at all times to exist and to represent them and to represent Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and without the Imam as we mentioned in uh, previous episodes uh, that uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will never keep uh, man existing if he does not have a representative Definitely. upon this earth because uh, you know, uh, he could no longer hold them accountable. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, we also mentioned why yesterday the purpose of occult, uh, uh, occultation and the, the reasons behind it. Mm -hmm. So, uh, his existence we believe in 100%, but uh, his reappearance is what we pray for mm -hmm. and what we wish for. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is something, you know, we wish for his reappearance, they wish for his birth, they wish uh, that, you know, he he's given birth to and he's mm -hmm. born and he comes as a savior. Mm -hmm. But as a matter of fact, when people, especially uh, Sunnis, when they say that he is yet to be born, Sahih Muslim mentions explicitly in uh, his book, uh, I didn't write it down, but uh, if my memory uh, is, is perfect, Sahih Muslim in his book he says that the Mahdi of Muhammad, the Mahdi of the Holy House of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, uh, will come at the end of time and he is the son of Al Hassan al Askari. So, right there, we have indication that from their own books, inshallah, tomorrow, if uh, respected viewers need references. I'll bring references tomorrow uh, to discuss this. But Sayyidina, uh, something that goes on uh, with our discussion, I know we have a couple of minutes left, uh, but Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and his purified household, he says, even if the entire duration of the world's existence has already been exhausted and only one day is left before the day of judgment, Allah will expand that day to such a length of time 
as to accommodate the kingdom of a person from the holy household, uh, from my holy household, who will possess my name. He will fill the earth with peace, justice, and tranquility after it has been filled with injustice and tyranny. So we, we are promised with someone. He's not saying the birth of a Messiah. And this is in Sahih Muslim, in Bukhari, and various books from the Sunni uh, text. But he's not saying the birth of someone. He is saying that the Allah will extend to accommodate the kingdom of a person who will come and possess my name as Muhammad. And if we go uh, into Christianity, the term Messiah is uh, merely another name for uh, Jesus, the son of Mary. Mm -hmm. Messiah means that uh, the person who came and gave his life, mm -hmm. sacrificed himself to, to save the sons of Adam from their mm -hmm. sins. Mm -hmm. So this is uh, uh, the belief in Christianity. That yes, he was cru crucified. Then uh, he, uh, you know, he 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 was uh, resurrected from the dead, mm -hmm. and uh, he will once again return to to as a Messiah again to save uh, humanity from their sins, uh, and he is the sacrifice of God. Mm -hmm. So this is uh, the Christian uh, translation. And as for Buddhist, the uh, Maitreya. Yes. And Buddhism. for uh, Hinduism, the Kalaki, the human and tenth avatar of uh, Vishnu. So, you know, if we go to worldwide religions, Everyone then knows. you'll see that every single religion, faith, and belief has, you know, this concept of a savior. Mm -hmm. But we as uh, human beings, we need to come together and to see what we can do to hasten the appearance of, of, of this person who yes. will bring justice and, and uh, tyranny and mm -hmm. injustice on this earth. You know, if, if you go to India, you see poverty is, 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 is you know, overtaking the whole country yes. if you go to africa you'll see the same if you go yes. to china you see that you know it's the same you everywhere, everywhere you go yeah. you know one third of this planet is, is 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 below poverty levels and wars and battles and yeah. and butchering and killing and it's taken over the whole world mm -hmm. so we as humans when will we realize that we need to, you know, call upon our Savior? Inshallah. Is it the same person? Is it, uh, you know, different individuals? When will we sit down and realize that, uh, if, uh, uh, that we need to work upon uh, the Savior? Mm -hmm. uh, and His, his, his uh, you know, reappearance. Mm -hmm as a messiah to, to, to bring peace on this world. Mm -hmm. uh, now, in, uh, inshallah, in uh, further episodes, we'll speak about the duties of those who are awaiting their messiah. Yes. What we need to do to uh, hasten his appearance as Muslims and non-Muslims. And because, what we need to, uh, to avoid And delay. what we need to avoid to delay his reappearance and uh, you know uh, as uh, my advice that there is no uh, difference in between you know whether you're a Muslim or a Jew or a Christian because you know the things I'll mention are basically you know uh, marital acts that people need to carry in everyday lives and conduct to re hasten the appearance of the Messiah. Inshallah. Thank you very much, Sayyidina, for joining us tonight. Uh, Sayyidina and respected viewers, I would like to conclude tonight's episode uh, by one narration hadith by Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib who says, When the supporter of the family of Muhammad, peace be upon him, Qa'im al Muhammad, may Allah hasten his reappearance, rises, Allah will unite the people of the East and the people 
of the West together. So we do find that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will unite everyone under the banner of God Imam Lord. al-Mahdi, insha'Allah. So thank you very much, Sayyidina, for joining us tonight. Yeah, Respective well. viewers, thank you very much for joining us tonight. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, once again, I do repeat that every episode. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the ability to improve ourselves for the hastening of the 12th Imam's reappearance. Thank you very much for tuning in. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum, Sayyidina. Thank you very much.